So, how big of a chance do you think a person has to fully master English in a year? By fully master, I'm talking about being able to handle sort of daily tasks in their life in English gracefully. Difficult, challenging, nearly impossible. However difficult you think it might be, it's a lot easier comparing to what they did. So the story is about British cycling team, and there's something that you have to know about the team back then. The team was terrible, terrible, terrible. They sucked for about a hundred years, for a century, and during this hundred years, they had only won one gold medal in international competitions. They were so bad to the point that nobody wanted to sell them anything because they were afraid if people saw British cycling team using their product, that might ruin their reputation. And that was incredibly sad. <laughs> But anyway, in early 2000s, there was this guy called Dave Rails Ford, and he came in. And you might think he probably did something big, like reinvented the training technique or anything like that. But he didn't do anything like that. On the other hand, what he did was little things like redesigning the cycling seat, making it more comfortable for the riders. Hiring massagers and providing massage, even hired a surgeon to teach them how to wash their hands to avoid getting a cold. All of those little things. I know. How big a change can this make? The result: in 2008, Beijing Olympic Games, the team, British cycling team, they won 60% of the gold medals available in the game. Four years later, in London, they set nine new Olympic records. And seven new world records. That's crazy. It's like a person barely knows A B C and started to learn English. For a year, he became the best English speaker in the world. That's insane. And how would they be able to do that? It's actually the power of marginal gain. Simply put, getting one percent better every single day, and through compound effect. If you do that consecutively for a year. If you do the math, by the end of the year, you'll be 37 times more efficient. It's a lot. Say now you need 10 hours to convert maybe 200 new words. You're 30 times, 37 times more efficient. You probably don't even need an hour to do that. You could easily do that within an hour if you can learn English at this efficiency level. It's just a piece of cake. All right, so here comes the important question: How do we duplicate this effect in English learning? Here's how. So the powerful weapon we're gonna utilize is called Cope's experimental cycle, and this cycle has four different stages: experience, reflection, abstraction, and experimentation. It looks pretty simple, and it is actually simple, very easy to implement. It almost seems too good to be true, but believe me, it works if you keep on doing it. Every single day, it's gonna pay off.、Uh, let me just take English learning for example. Say I just started to learn English, and I'm using Cox Experimental to improve to improve my efficiency. And say I started out by using memorization, pure memorization. My experience would probably be I try to memorize the vocabulary least. So that's my experience, and once I have this experience, I can do a reflection on it, and I'll probably say, "Well, it's pretty exhausting, and I easily forgot to what I memorized a week later." So that's just you know an observation of how you felt during the process of doing this experience. Okay, and once you have this reflection, you can try to figure out why you felt exactly the way that you felt in your reflection, and that will be our abstraction. So I'll probably say something like, "This is probably because I didn't do revision frequently, right?" And once I figure out what the problem lies in, I can figure out a way to solve the problem, come up with a new method, a new way of doing things. So I would say I would do space to revision next time. So next time I study English, I will not purely just you know memorize vocabulary. I will memorize, but also I will do revision. So this experimentation, if I did it, it will become my as per my experience next time. So my experience will be I used to space to revision to memorize vocabulary, and once I have this. Again, we're gonna have a reflection on it. So I would say, well, retention was much higher this time. But when I try to apply the words, I don't know how to use them. 
that's actually pretty natural, right? And once I have this reflection, I try to figure out why I felt this way. What's the reason behind it? So I'll probably uh, give a hypothesis. It doesn't have to be like 100% true or correct because sometimes you have no idea why it is so, right? So I'll just take a guess. So I will say, I didn't know how to use the words, maybe because I didn't learn them in the contest, right? It's just a simple guess. It doesn't hurt because I will come up come up a new way to solve the problem, and I will try to use it to solve the problem. If it didn't work out, my next round of the Cobb's cycle will tell me that it's not the right way. So I will take another round to figure out where the problem is and how I can solve it. But I think this is actually pretty accurate. So anyway, I'm gonna move on to the next stage, which is experimentation. So I would probably say, I will learn new vocabularies in context and use the space to revision to revise them. And then next time I will do this to study English. And now you could already see how much more efficient you can become by using this way of learning as compared to, to this way of learning when you are just starting out. It's two different levels. Even though this way of learning English is still not very specific, pretty vague, and sometimes it may work, sometimes it may not. But the point is, well, we want to focus on the process. We don't want to focus on the product because product is a performance. Sometimes you may be good, sometimes you may not. It's pretty natural. But if we can improve the process of getting to the destination, getting to the result, we can be sure that in the long run, we will do things very efficiently. And that's what we are looking for. Just like this. Say, this little man on the left side is you, and on the right side, the star represents where you want to get. So say this is like speaking English perfectly or speaking English fluently. And when we are starting out, we don't know how to study English, so we just use the road learning. And, but we are not doing copes. We just keep on learning, keep on learning. If it doesn't work out, we blame ourselves, not working hard enough, and we put in more hours, hoping that it will eventually work out. But we don't know what the problem is. We just keep on trying. So we're practicing a lot, but we're practicing the wrong way of doing things. You will just get a more wrong, if that makes sense, right? So we'll be departuring and gradually get to a position that's further and further away from where we want to be without realizing it. And once we know, oh, it's probably not the right way, it's already too late. Or we can use another way, we can use copes. So we started from the same spot, but we are doing copes constantly. We reflect, we do abstraction, and we try new ways of doing things. We use different methods, and here we, we realize what the problem is, and we use a different method to solve the problem, and we didn't quite get it perfectly right the next time, but we keep on trying, and gradually we'll figure out a way that's pretty close to the most efficient way of learning English, even though there will still be up and downs, but we are you know, traveling alongside this green line, pretty safe, and eventually we'll get to the place we want to be. That's the process, and that's focusing on the result, and we want to focus on the process of getting to the result. If we can improve that, we can improve our efficiency tremendously. All right, so the point is practice does not make perfect. Practice that makes it perfect. This is probably the biggest July. This is so misleading. This is so damn stupid. Practice does not make perfect. It's perfect practice that makes it perfect. And the most efficient way to get to perfect practice is through implementing COPE cycle every single day. So go ahead, implement it, be patient with it. Growth will take place. All right, so this is a wrap. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Until next one, I'll see you guys. Bye.